Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. This week we have live music on the show with Simon Felice. We'll tell you about all the great things locals can do at the Emerson Resort and Spa with Tony Lanza. And we'll start with Raleigh Green and Devin Mathis to talk about this year's Art Bridge project. Hi guys, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Now Raleigh, I want to start with you first because you're a, a recent transplant to the area. Yes. And you have a, a company, Raleigh Green Incorporated, which helps um, local businesses get attention, either online or in print or on radio. And one of the businesses we had here recently on the show, which is Adirondack Creamery. Yes, it's a great client. It's a wonderful story. I have a, when I moved from New York City about a little more than two years ago, upstate, um, I embraced the community, I've fallen in love with it, and I love the, um, the people, the businesses, and there's a lot of potential, there's a lot of good um, stories to be told, and uh, hopefully my work, which includes branding and marketing and advertising, um, is helping to accomplish some of that. So what exactly can you do for a company? Here's your chance to give a pitch. I help companies to clarify their, their story, their message, and reach specific targeted audiences, oftentimes for the purpose of growing sales or to introduce new products or services and to bring positive attention uh, to their business. One of the first things you did when you came to the area was help bring ArtBridge here. And mm -hmm. last year we had the first ArtBridge project. Devin, you're new to ArtBridge this year. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what ArtBridge is for people who, are, who weren't familiar with what happened here in Kingston last year? Sure. Um, I've actually been with Art Bridge for a little over two years now, but I'm new to uh, representing Art Bridge Kingston, up right. in Kingston. Uh -huh. um, so Art Bridge was started or founded by Rodney Durso back in 2008 um, as a way to create and increase exposure opportunities for local emerging artists. And so when Raleigh, Raleigh's on our advisory council, and when he moved up to Kingston, he saw the um, Green Kill Avenue Broadway bridges and thought of it, thought of it as a perfect opportunity for our bridge. And so he kind of wanted to take his love for Kingston, Kingston's art community, and his love for Art Bridge and kind of merge the two together. And so he asked us to come up here and do a project. So the Green Kill Bridge over, over Broadway, a lot of people know it. It's sort of, you know, it's this green drab thing and you know, people hang bed sheets over it with messages. <laughs> Not quite that. Yeah. But you know, there's a lot of, you know, sort of odd size banners that mm -hmm. hang up over it for most of the year. But last year, for the first time ever, there were two full length murals on either side. They went up in March and they lasted for about six months. Is that right? Exactly. It was six months. So it went up right around um, the St. Patrick's Day parade, right before it. So we're hoping to do the same thing this year. So our open call is already launched um, and it'll be open through uh, January 5th. And then um, the next exhibition will open or launch uh, right around this year, St. Patrick's Day Parade. So what are we looking for in terms of artists, Raleigh? Out of the box thinkers, um, creative spirits. It can be abstract, it can be real realistic. Um, a diversity of, of entries would be the ideal. Um, what we've seen is that uh, this area has a, an enormous wealth of creative talent um, and uh, from different kinds of uh, types, again, whether it's modern or whether it's traditional. And um, we're looking primarily for things that are more landscape or horizontal to obviously fit in that, that specific location. Um, but uh, we're open to a lot of different themes and ideas, um, and the curation panel will make their decision um, come uh, mid-January. So who is the curation panel made up of? What type of people, Devin? I'd say it's primarily arts professionals. Um, it's not 100% set yet, so I can't release any names, uh, but um, it's uh, individuals who are from the Mid-Hudson Valley. Um, either professional artists who have made a career out of you know, their own art practice or other arts management curators um, from the Hudson Valley area. Is there any type of art that you don't want people, like for instance something that may be uh, an optical illusion as people are driving under the bridge? <laughs> are there things, are there guidelines that we're suggesting to artists? Um, definitely. The full submission guidelines are on the Art Bridge website, but um, I'd say we don't necessarily look for anything that's racy uh, or um, politically uh, focused but the one great thing that we do is um, the works are it's, we're not hanging the originals so we can we can accept any many different kinds of uh, mediums even sculpture we've had actual sculptures where the person came to our studio set up the sculpture and we photograph that and then replicated it on the on the vinyl so it is it is it is open to uh, many different types of mediums and, and artists and there's no age limit um, you we do not care if you've 
you know, received your MFA or if you're further along in your career, we, we look for emerging artists and we define that by as long as you don't have solo um, gallery representation, you're open to apply. So a first time artist is conceivably el eligible for this. Absolutely. Terrific. Last year, what was it? Over 100 artists, Raleigh? We had over 100 artists submit and we're uh, fully expecting that number to be exceeded this year with uh, the greater awareness of the program. Tell me what happened to the um, arts that went up on the bridge last year. What where, when it came down, where did it go? What became of it? Uh, well, I think Devin could answer that more <laughs> specifically, okay. but um, I think it's in progress. So what we do with the um, material when it comes down, we now actually, it's vinyl. Is that it, what it's it on? It is vinyl. Uh -huh. This is for this particular project. It was a vinyl mesh, just because we want it to be a little bit more breathable. Um, but we actually work with another nonprofit that um, hires and employs um, formerly formerly homeless women. And they actually make bags out of it. So it comes down, the vinyl comes down. Like, we, shop, like shopping bags? They're, like or? To, they're tote bags. Uh -huh. um, they're tote bags. I mean, they're, you know, it's uh, entry level, like, um, I guess, sewing skills. So they're, you know, your basic tote, but they're really, they're really special just because it's every single bag is a one of a kind, unique piece of art that you now get to carry around. So they're in process, like Raleigh said, and hopefully we should have them um, in the beginning of uh, 2014, hopefully early January, they'll be available. Terrific. Well, the website is art-bridge.org, mm -hmm. and the entry deadline is January 5th. Yes. Yes. Got it. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. You're watching Kingston Now. Next is Tony Lanza from the Emerson Resort and Spa in Mount Tremper to tell us about some exciting new things there this winter. Welcome back to Kingston Now. Tony Lanza is the Chief Operating Officer of the Emerson Resort and Spa. And boy, do they have some cool stuff for people to do there this winter. Hi, Tony. How are you? How are you doing, Jimmy? Good to see you, Jim. The, the perception, though, I think for a lot of people is that the Emerson is for, you know, downstate people or people who come in from outside the area. But that's not true, right? Well, I mean, just the design and setup of the Emerson. We've, uh, we've got a wonderful hotel, two hotels, but there are only 53 rooms. And when you think about the size of our retail shops, our beautiful spa, our restaurants, if we don't have a relevancy in our local community, we can't make it. So we are all about the local community and attracting the local community to make it part of their culture and lifestyle. So what's going on there this winter? Well, this winter we're really excited. We've got, uh, we, last year we introduced cross-country skiing because we've taken a whole change, uh, a turnaround as far as our strategies goes. The Emerson Resort and Spa is not a five-star hotel. It's just a real nice country inn with great amenities. And the real true star is the rivers, the Esopus, Bel Air Mountain, Hunter Mountain, Mount Tremper, and we are just a great place to stay and enjoy these things. So we've got a whole new outdoor concierge that if you're into rock climbing, ice climbing, backcountry skiing, alpine skiing, we can make it happen this winter for you. And last year, we started with cross-country skiing, and we've got a ski shop in our retail component that you can rent skis, and new for this year, something that people have been asking for in that region forever, that's ice skating. We built a brand new pond. We've got ice skating rentals, very affordable, not just for our guests, but for everyone. We've got this great fire pit that'll be out there. We'll be skating till nine o'clock at night, weather permitting, it will be attended. Uh, and for those folks, and especially for the parents whose kids are a little bit too young to skate or one child's a little young, we've got what we call the beanbag theater. And the beanbag theater is a special 12 by 12 projection unit that will be showing children's films on Saturday night uh, at six o'clock. And of course, you'll be able to get hot chocolate in our uh, coffee bar. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole fun thing that's going on. The uh, outdoor skating must be extraordinary because you're surrounded by those beautiful mountains in Mount Tremper. Yeah, one, one of the great things is, you know, we, the, the skating pond is sitting right next to the Esopus. I mean, and there's no better section, I think, in the Catskills to view the Esopus from there. But it's also in the shadow of Mount Tremper. And I think Mount Tremper... Uh, from a physical point, is probably one of the Catskills' most beautiful mountains. Now, the cross-country course, the track is actually on the grounds of the Emerson, right? Right. The cross-country is on the grounds. Uh, we've got a 1.4-mile a, a loop that we do groom, but we can also, uh, hoping this year, uh, the construction on our local railroad has been done, so we're expecting it to take uh, skiers down the railroad tracks into Phoenicia, for lunch and pick them up and bring them back. So we're talking about a real Alpine Nordic experience. Oh, that's terrific. Now, backcountry skiing is, uh, you know, is just one of the most exciting things. You were describing it to me prior to yep. uh, the cameras rolling. And you're going to take people out into places that just aren't skied by anyone, right? I mean, that, that's people don't realize the great tree skiing and the great opportunities 
that the high peaks of the Catskills have. Uh, we've got uh, great old logging trails. So you put a pair of skins, and skins are, uh, go over the bottom of your ski so it allows you to climb uphill. Uh, you telemark up, meaning your heel is not fixed. And then when you get to the top, you could fix your heel or telemark ski. And depending on your ability, you either come back down the logging trail or you can actually jump in the woods. And uh, we've got some guides that know where to go. They know where those great powder stashes are. Uh, and uh, it's a lot safer than you think skiing in the woods because uh, you're skiing a lot slower. And if you're with a good guide and you're, 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 you've got the, the right levels of ability, it can be probably one of the most amazing experiences you can have in the East. And it's entirely different than going to one of the area, uh, one of the ski areas locally and getting online and getting on a lift and going up. I mean, this is really an adventure. Yeah, this is an adventure. I mean, this is not even soft adventure. I think you can say this is more hard adventure. Um, and, and depending, there are so many levels and there are so many different, different opportunities that we could take people out that, uh, I mean, you have to be a strong intermediate skier. But uh, it's, uh, it's a great experience. And, but let not, let's not take away from Bel Air Mountain, New oh, York, not at all. Snow course. Park. I mean, not at all. I got to tell you, with 50, 50 trails, the highest skiable peak, it's still, I think, the best value and the best skiing. And uh, we're just 12 minutes from there, and we've got amazing ski packages for those people that do want to stay with us. I mean, you could ride and ski for $53 per night per person, double occupancy, and you can also get a lift voucher for $30. So you could ski midweek for $80 per person, and, that's, and stay and almost have a, a Deer Valley experience. It's kind of amazing. Now, for people who um, want to go indoors, you've got a great fitness center and spa. Yeah, we've got, we don't just have a hotel fitness center. We've actually got a, uh, well, well, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a full fitness center. It's a full gym, um, complemented by all kinds of great new equipment. Uh, we've also got yoga. We've got restorative, uh, restorative yoga as well as yoga, Pilates, uh, and, and then, of course, all our spa treatments. So it's, it, it's a lot different. Now, a lot of people know the Emerson because of the kaleidoscopes. Talk about that for a minute. <laughs> Jimmy, you know how I feel about the kaleidoscope. <laughs> the, uh, you know, for, for those folks who don't know about kaleidoscopes, kaleidoscopes is an amazing art form. And one of the things that I did not understand for many years following the Emerson, because my prior life, being the superintendent of Bel Air, I worked very, very closely with the Emerson. I could never understand this kaleidoscope store and this giant Guinness record-breaking kaleidoscope. I saw it. It was interesting. But now since I've been affiliated the last year, I've heard so many great stories. I mean, I had a professor from Tennessee come up uh, with his wife, who looked like normal people, traveled all the way up just to view because they said that they thought we have uh, one of the top three collections in the world. Recently, uh, a gentleman who came up for the Mercedes-Benz uh, Fashion Week in New York, uh, a gentleman from Beijing came up and spent enormous amounts of money and continues to spend enormous amounts of money all the way from Beijing. So there's, a, there's an amazing art form. Uh, there are people around the world who collect these products. And week after week, it's not our Molina's Fashion Boutique. It's not our men's stores. It's not our, it's not our general stores or our antique center. Every week, our Kaleidoscope is our top selling store in, in the uh, facility. Amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> and without any promotion, the world's largest Kaleidoscope sees 600 people. I, I can't even remember in a year of doing an ad for them. But we still see 600 people a month that come in to see this multi-media uh, extravaganza. It's really amazing. Well, it sounds like you're going to have a great winter at the Emerson. And Tony, thanks for stopping by. And Jimmy, thank you so much for having us here. It's really great to see you again. Good to see you. It's Kingston Now. And next, we're going to have some live music on the show from Simon Felice. Welcome back to Kingston Now. Back in 2006, the Felice brothers, Ian, Simon, and James, burst out of the Catskill Mountains with their brand of homegrown music. Soon the country and the world had taken notice. A few years ago, Simon decided to make music on his own, and he's here with us today to talk about the follow-up to his solo debut. Hi, Simon. Hi, Jimmy Puff. Now, last time I saw you was uh, or Labor Day weekend. You were on stage with your brothers. The Felice brothers uh, did a show at Opus 40, the extraordinary venue, and you were just having yourself a grand old time. Well, yeah, it was a beautiful day, and uh, our whole family was there. All the different contingents had come from the far reaches of all around the Hudson Valley and it was just nice to be there with friends and family in such a beautiful spot and it didn't feel like labor you know it, it, even though it was Labor Day you know it was like uh, you know you, it's all about doing something in your life that doesn't really feel like work right and you never never really have to go to work you know? which is sweet you know and, and I know that you travel the world now with your music and your brothers travel the world with their music so it's nice 
when it intersects in your backyard like that. Yeah, amen. Yeah. It was awesome. I had such a good time. I hope we do it again next year. And then I saw you in June up at Hunter Mountain for Mountain Jam, and you were on stage with the Lumineers, your friends in the Lumineers. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. They called me out on this uh, old Dylan tune, and I came and banged some drums. And again, you know, it's uh, when you're when you're in your elements, when you're in your mountains or in your valley, it's uh, it's always a uh, so rewarding to make music there because that's where the music really comes from for us. And, and your music is sort of, I mean, it, it really has always felt to me like Catskill Mountain music. You were born and raised in, in, in these mountains. You still live in these mountains. So regardless, it's infused with these mountains, your music. Yeah, you can't get away from it, you know. Um, and we grew up in the, in the shadow of the 60s and 70s when some of the greatest music, you know, in, in American and world history was being made. And a lot of it was happening right here. And... Uh, we grew up with that, the whisper of those songs, you know, coming through the trees and, and uh, through the airwaves. So, so we're lucky to just be a part of that uh, tradition and lineage. You have a new record coming out in March. It's called Strangers. Uh, you made that here in the mountains, too. Tell me about the record. Um, we've been working for, on it for about a year uh, out at my friend David's studio in Boyceville. So we were up on the top of this great mountain um, off Trevor Hollow Road, really great dead end road. And uh, Jimi Hendrix used to have a house out there. Uh, I guess his manager had moved him from the house in Woodstock because there was too many freaks starting to camp out on this front yard. <laughs> <laughs> so they moved him to this secret uh, mountain house out in Boyceville. Anyway, uh, my friend David has a studio out there, and we've been working there for about a year on and off. And we just finished it about a month ago. And um, I'm really proud of it, and I can't wait for everybody to hear it. Uh, just very recently, they just put out the single, uh, Molly O, and um, a lot of good friends are, and brothers are singing and playing on it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to sharing it with everybody. Molly O is a, uh, this um, bright, sunshine, summer, golden-hued, just feel-good song. But you have another side. You have an introspective side. You have a side that is really um, focused on the world at hand. And both you and I are parents of young children. And I know that in, in influences some of your songwriting. And in fact, you're about to play us a song that probably has some relation to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we all have, um, you know, the, the darkness and the light inside of us. And uh, it's, we're part of this beautiful strange green planet you know spinning in the cosmos and there's a night and there's a day so um i guess i'll sing a, a sadder song although I, I i i feel like it's a hopefully a positive revelation on my part um just having pearl she's three and a half now and she goes to her first little school and um last year just around this time it was the newtown uh tragedy and i was driving home from new york city and um, I, heard, I was just trying to listen to the radio, trying to find something good on the radio, on the throughway. And it just, I hit some Connecticut station down, you know, between here and Jersey. And, uh, and they were just like going live, talking about what was happening. And I just pulled over the car and uh, it, it just, um, you know, took the wind out of me. And, uh, and so I wrote this song, sort of inspired by that and, and just, you know, gun violence in America in general, uh, our worship of the trigger, it's getting bigger and bigger. We run down the halls, we scurry like rats. We run in our shawls and our sweatshirts and hats. There's a stranger in the classroom. Did Jesus leave us? In the pale winter sun Man, you should have seen us See how we run Our Lady of the Gun They swore to us we had God on our team and no one could mess with us crazy marines. We zipped up our vests and we hit the 
strangers in the holy land did jesus leave us to beat on our drum they blew us to pieces in the low desert sun Simon Felice. The new record is called Strangers. It'll be out in March on the Dual Tone record label. And if people want to hear Molly O, the first single, they can go to simonfelice.com. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. So that's it for this week's show. For more about ArtBridge, go to art-bridge.org. For more about great winter activities, go to emersonresort.com. And for more of the music of Simon Felice, go to simonfelice.com. Remember, all of our previous shows are available on our YouTube channel, and you can find that link on our Facebook page. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buff. We'll see you next time.